Deck the halls with bars for deadlifts. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to grow your biceps. Fa la 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 la. Lunges, pulls, and squats and pushes. Fa la 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 la. Dad bots have no rolls or mushes. Fa la 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 la. What's up, guys? This is Alex Van Houten with Defining Dad Bot. I hope you're doing well. Don't worry, I won't quit my day job to start writing Christmas carols with fitness themes. But I would be remiss if I didn't start this show with a very Merry Christmas to you and your family. I hope it's a wonderful holiday season and a great springboard into 2020 for you, your family, and your community. I'm excited for today's show because we're continuing on with our True Fit series long-term health and fitness goals for 2020. And in the last episode, we talked about motivating factors that were bigger than ourselves to help us create long-term health and fitness goals. Whereas in this episode, we're covering some pro tips on how to make the phases of training fit into the seasons of our lives. Regardless of your type of goal, whether it's body composition, health and vitality based, or even performance based, intelligent periodized training and how that fits into your life is one of the most important aspects of staying consistent and keeping your health and fitness goals practical to the big vision of what you're doing in your world. It's going to be an awesome show. I know you'll find it powerful and helpful. If you're listening to the sound of my voice and you're not already a part of it, please take me up on the invitation to join us in the Defining Dad Bod Inner Circle. We have an online social media community with men and women who are working to become 1% better every single day. We ask and answer questions and we get real about the struggles and triumphs in our fitness journey. And if you need somebody in your corner this year, it's a great place to start. Go to definingdadbod.com slash inner circle to join the group and get involved. Access to the group is free, although you will see that there are opportunities to support the show since we are 100% listener supported. And that keeps us unbought and unbiased in terms of supplements that we talk about on the show science that we reference with regard to different exercises we engage in, and keeps the work we're doing here focused on you and your results, which is what a personalized health and fitness journey should be about anyway. If you do choose to support the show, we appreciate you. And if you can't right now, no worries. We'd love to have you a part of the community anyway. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and or the YouTube channel if you'd like to make sure that you don't miss a publication. And if you feel so inclined, five-star raving reviews for the podcast or the Defining Dad Bod Facebook page go a long way to help connect people to the 85 hours of content that we have here. It's been powerful to me over the past couple years to wake up to messages that say, Alex, I've been following your show for about five months, and it's made a huge impact and powerful difference in my life. I look at my exercise differently, I look at my nutrition differently, and I can see that it's impacting my wife and my kids positively. Keep up the good work you're doing. It's making a difference in my life. And for my part in 2020, I want to hear more of that. And all it takes sometimes is the recommendation of a friend to say, hey, have you checked out the Defining Dad Bod podcast? I know you're on a fitness journey, and I think you'll find this valuable and helpful. And if there's anything I can do to make it easier for you to share this with your friends and family, let me know. We'll make it happen. Again, a very Merry Christmas to you and yours. Let's get to the show. So in preparation for 2020, we're talking about long-term health and fitness, the different components that make up a powerful mindset that lets you plan for the future a year in advance, rather than thinking about your health and fitness as like a four-week or eight-week program. So last time we talked about this, we talked about the motivations that are outside of you, beyond your own ideas of what health and fitness will do for you and who you might be working on this stuff for. And we also talked about how you'll never really, quote, get there and how human motivational factors allow us to continue reaching for goals. And once we reach those new heights, we have to continually be reaching. Now, that's a very, very quick summation of quite a bit of information that we covered last time we were together. And today we're going to talk about different phases of training and how an intelligent program will allow us to put those phases of training into the context of the seasons of our life. So if we have long-term health and fitness goals, it's important that our training program, whether we're in the foundations or a deload phase, an endurance or fat burn phase, a hypertrophy or muscle growing phase, or even an athleticism or peaking phase, it's important that an intelligent program puts those things in the context of our daily life. 
For instance, right now is the holiday season. And in the holiday season, I like to be going through a hypertrophy phase. Hypertrophy meaning overgrowth. That is hypertrophy. Say it with me like a buff kitty. Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy as a phase increases the cross-sectional area of muscle tissue. Or as a good friend of mine likes to put it, the gain train, baby. Now, while you're on the gain train, you're doing high volume of moderate to heavy loads of exercise. Think three to five sets of eight to 12 repetitions. There's a little bit of variance in there, but that's about the size of it. But what's powerful about the hypertrophy phase is it teaches and requires your body to use carbohydrates as a fuel source while you're working to grow that muscle tissue. You'll deplete your glycogen stores, and then you'll require them to be filled back up again. Glycogen is the complex version of the carbohydrates that we eat after they've been processed and then stored in our liver and our muscle tissue. And so personally, I like to pit my hypertrophy season during the holidays. I know I'm going to be exposed to Christmas cookies. I know that the season itself isn't complete without some hot cocoa. And I know that I want to be able to enjoy those things with my kids, my family, and even my coworkers without being too concerned about how the carbohydrates are adding up for me. And so seasonally, I like to make sure that my hypertrophy phase of training falls in the context of the holiday season. I'm going to use those carbs really well and intelligently in tandem with my goals, rather than having to fight the season's festivities while my own body composition goals are at odds with what's going on around me. And this sort of thing is true for all of the phases of training. Let's say there's a period of this year that you know is coming up where you're going to be traveling a lot and you're not going to have normal access to the gym equipment that's at your home or at your local gym facility. As one of my clients likes to put it, you know you're going to be relegated to crappy hotel gyms for a while. Or maybe not even hotel gyms. Maybe you're stuck waiting on flights on a regular basis. And if you are going to work out, you're going to do it in the middle of the LA airport with everybody watching you. I hope to see you trending on social media if that's the case. Hashtag defining dad bod. But with that being said, if you know something like that's coming up in your life, it would be intelligent from a programming perspective to have a foundations or deload phase during that time period. The foundations phase of training is a low volume phase of training that doesn't require much equipment to accomplish well. Lightweight, bodyweight exercises, slow, intense, and concentrated movements, and even plyometric based balance drills can all be a part of injury prevention and increasing the density of your ligaments and tendons to prepare for future phases of training. What I'm saying for you is that you can use the fact that your travel schedule is going to make it hard to get to the gym to your advantage. I know it sounds like a lot of planning, but if you are seriously considering looking at your health and fitness as a long-term progression of 1% better every single day, then this really is how intensely you have to look at your year. Now I know, I know, things change, and sometimes you don't have the foresight on some of the things that are coming up for you. The best laid plans of mice and men, am I right? But that doesn't mean that there aren't quite a few things that you already know looking into 2020 that would inform a very intelligent health and fitness program if you sat down to flesh it out. Now, I've spent a lot of time on this show fleshing out what the phases of training actually look like and what acute variables make them up. I'm not going to recreate that here, although there are several resources in the links in the description below to help you navigate that if you're interested. That also includes some pro tip videos that my coaching clients go through whenever they start a new phase. Those just came out. Shout out to Mr. Serge Berg, who inspired me to make those for my clients. You rock, man. But here I wanted to walk through each phase of training and some pro tips I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks and for programming for my clients when it comes to making their phases of training fit with their current life and the seasons that they're going to go through this year. There are four phases, the foundations phase, the endurance phase, the hypertrophy phase, and the athleticism phase. And I'm going to run through a quick list for each of them. Note that if you're listening to this and it makes your head spin, this is what I do for a living. And I hope you'll consider reaching out for virtual coaching if 2020 sees you looking at a long-term view of health and fitness and you'd rather outsource this headache to somebody else. Be sure to shoot me an email at coachal at definingdadbod.com. Either myself or my training apprentice will take good care of you to make sure that you have a great plan for 2020. So starting with the foundations phase, some pro tips for you. As I said earlier, the foundations phase can oftentimes be accomplished with just your body weight. There's a few caveats to that, but that makes the foundations phase a very nice phase to be in when you go on vacation, you do some traveling for work, or are otherwise making some changes that are going to keep you from accessing your gym equipment. Additionally, the foundations phase is the least stressful phase of training. And so if you're going through a period of high stress in your life, 
let's say you know that there's going to be a really busy season at work and that your job's going to change pretty hardcore during a certain month. Or you know that you have a new baby on the way, and as soon as that thing's born, you're going to be sleep-deprived and worn out. Then the foundations phase can be a very powerful phase to put over top of those stressful periods in life. That way, you can keep the habit of exercise alive, without exercise being something that breaks you down, and instead builds you up during that time. The last pro tip you should know about the foundations phase is that this is the phase that's most helpful during a time that you might be injured. If you've pushed yourself into something like plantar fasciitis, for instance, or maybe your running has your lower back bothering you. Or maybe you're like me and you injure yourself putting your kid in the car seat. Then the foundations phase should always be in your back pocket. As a helpful phase to help you rehabilitate yourself, to work on posture, core strength, and flexibility, and to readdress ligaments and tendons to keep them nice and dense and working for you rather than against you in the more intense phases of training. Next on the list, when you look at long-term health and fitness goals, the endurance phase is the next level up in intensity from the foundations phase. The endurance phase requires more time than the foundations phase. And from a cardiovascular perspective, when you're working the endurance phase, you're increasing the volume of your sessions, which means that you should do the endurance phase during times that you're able to, one, put quite a bit of time toward increasing your base. And two, if you're like me and you enjoy cardiovascular exercise outside in the form of running, You'll want to plan your endurance phases during seasons where you get to enjoy the weather. I don't know about you, but I'm a big giant baby running in the cold. So I plan my endurance phases during the spring and the fall. Living in the south means that if I tried to plan this over the summer, I'd have to battle heat exhaustion, and I have before. And so I try to plan my long running, increased volume stuff during the spring and the fall when I know the temperatures are going to be more moderate. Now, you might enjoy cycling, you might enjoy the pool, you might enjoy other things from a cardiovascular perspective that make my personal preferences moot here. But it's important to note during the endurance phase that you might have cardio sessions that last 60, 90, even 120 minutes, depending on what your goals are. So plan accordingly. Another pro tip during the endurance phase is that one of the adaptations you're looking for in the endurance phase is to build the machinery to burn fat better as a fuel source. That means that nutritionally, you shouldn't be too carb-dependent. And if there's a phase of training that you don't want holiday cookies around, this one's it. With the long durations of exercise that you're going through to increase volume and to improve the adaptations of endurance, you want to be teaching your body to burn fat as a fuel source and not to rely on the ups and downs of carbohydrate intake via glycogen stores. Personally, for me, that means that I plan my endurance season during times that I know I'm going to have maximal control over the food that's available to me. Since the winter finds me in a lot of holidays and the summer might find me traveling, those aren't ideal times for the endurance phase in my world. And I'll have maximal control over the environments that I'll be exposed to in the spring and fall months as well. Last but not least, a vain reason for planning my endurance phases differently. I don't know about you, but there are certain times of year where I would like my body composition to be at its best meaning that I would like to have the maximum amount of muscle that my body can handle while having the minimal amount of fat that my body's happy with. And those times look like vacations to Mexico, which I don't do very often, but it's important to note, and or times I'll be at the pool this summer. The endurance phase is not an ideal time for that sort of vanity. Your hard work won't show as well during the endurance phase. Type 1 muscle fibers don't take up a lot of space, and since you're exercising them in the endurance phase, your type 2 muscle fibers might become a little dormant meaning you won't look quite as toned as you would otherwise. Additionally, since I never recommend supplementing creatine during this phase, there's another reason for you not to look as toned as usual. Now I'm speaking as a man here, and many of the men listening understand what I'm talking about. Picture your ideal dad bod next to the pool. Your muscles pop nicely, your fat's almost non-existent, and you're happy to take your shirt off. Now ladies listening might think differently, and that's fine. In fact, I have a few ladies that I work with who like the endurance phase, and they like to be in this phase when they have an event to attend or pictures that are going to be taken of them. If having the smallest, slimmest dress matters to you, then it's very possible you'll enjoy your look most in the endurance phase. That's up to you to decide. For my part, if I want to look great, that's the hypertrophy or athleticism phase. I think of the endurance phase as a foundation for being able to train those phases well. Hashtag, everybody's different. So that brings me to the hypertrophy phase. The hypertrophy phase is actually the phase that takes up the most time in my program altogether, partially because of Ehlers-Danlos, which finds me building the muscles that I need to make up for the work that my ligaments and tendons aren't doing. And so about 60 to 70% of my training in a year happens in the hypertrophy phase. From a long-term health and fitness perspective, I think of hypertrophy as a time to make great use of carbohydrates, 
to work a little less cardio, and to increase my gym time. Most great hypertrophy workouts require some heavier weights and about 50 to 90 minutes, depending on what your program calls for. And so when I plan my hypertrophy phases, I plan them for times that I don't mind being in the gym for a long period of time and that I'd not rather be outside. An Arkansas summer is a good example of that time, as is a Colorado winter. Additionally, I've already said that the hypertrophy phase usually requires more carbohydrates. And so planning your hypertrophy around a time that you know carbohydrates are going to be abundant and that you might have a hard time limiting those for whatever reason is great as well. Another consideration for the hypertrophy phase is that you will usually weigh the most you'll weigh during the year, during your hypertrophy phase. Not necessarily because you might gain fat, but the water weight required to increase the cross-sectional area of your muscle tissue while perhaps supplementing creatine is going to mean that you're a little heavier than usual. The hypertrophy phase is a really bad time to try to train for an endurance event or to perform one. Running the first 15k you've ever run, for instance, or competing in a Spartan race, or in my world, competing in the American Ninja Warrior, should not happen during the hypertrophy phase. In biomechanics, we learned that every pound you gain is seven more pounds on your knees for the steps that you run. There's a little bit of physics math there because of power versus work, which I've covered in other places before if you're interested. The point is, when you're heavier during the hypertrophy phase, don't do things that are bad for you to be heavy for. Some things that come to mind are rock climbing, obstacle course racing, long distance endurance training, or trying to win the biggest loser. (laughs) Ha <laughs> just making sure you're still listening. And as I said earlier, generally your body composition is best poolside, or at least if you think like most guys I know, in the hypertrophy and athleticism phases. So plan for that as well. Which brings me to the last phase, the athleticism phase. Athleticism is a very all-encompassing phase. For some clients, they want to increase their strength during this phase. For others, they want to get better at jumping, sprinting, or even some other skills that they're working on, like handstand push-ups or muscle-ups on a bar. Whatever you're working on the athleticism phase, just like hypertrophy, you're going to require an increase in your carbohydrate intake. Similarly, you're going to increase your need for great recovery, sleep and otherwise. Athleticism is not ideal for a time that you're going to be stressfully traveling, experiencing some sort of change in your life and work, or unable to sleep like you know you need to. Because in the athleticism phase, the risk of injury is the highest of any of the training phases. People don't generally hurt themselves performing a bird dog in the foundations phase. More likely, they hurt themselves performing 10 sprints in the athleticism phase. And sure, form matters and the training up until that point can definitely make a difference. But if you haven't eaten enough carbohydrates, your glycogen stores are depleted, and you didn't get enough sleep last night, you're setting yourself up for failure in the athleticism phase. In fact, I covered this specifically in episode 9 of Defining Dad Bod, the episode called How to Work Out While Sleep Deprived, where I gave a shout out to all the new dads out there and implored them not to do power training while they were sleep deprived from an infant, no matter how badly you wanted to go hit the gym hard. I might be preaching to the choir, but I've known a few guys who have sucked down too much pre-workout in an attempt to go burn off some stress and then found themselves injured because they tried to do athleticism while sleep deprived. Don't be that guy. And I'll reiterate it here. The athleticism phase is usually the peak of performance and body composition. When you're in this phase, usually your muscle is as high as it can be while having your fat as low as it can be. So if there's something specific that you want to look your best for, now's a great time. And it's not just looking great, you also will find your peak performance in the athleticism phase. So if you and your buddies are going to perform in a Spartan race, the athleticism phase should lead up to your event. There are a few other things that I could say about this, but I think I've given you a good start. When you think about your long-term health and fitness goals, periodizing your phases around the seasons of your life is paramountly important. In fact, right next to nutrition coaching, planning these phases around the seasons of my client's life is what I spend the most time on my coaching calls doing. And I hope these pro tips have given you an idea how you can do that for yourself in 2020. Next time we hit long-term health and fitness goals, we'll be talking about body composition change, how we approach long-term change versus how we approach short-term change. I'm excited to cover it with you. But until then, this has been Alex Van Houten with the Funding Dad Bod. Kick butt, take names. The free practical advice and conversations here remain unbought and unbiased thanks to the support of listeners just like you. For more information on how you can become a part of the inner circle of Defining Dad Bod, go to definingdadbod.com slash inner circle.